What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Twin Motion and Lumion video for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit about doing a comparison between Lumion and Twin Motion. Probably what I'm gonna do is break this video up into multiple parts just so we can really kind of get in depth on this. One of the questions I get a lot is which one is better, Twin Motion or Lumion? And so the, the answer to that question is that it's complicated depending on what you value. So I thought we'd be better off if I just went through and did a comparison between different features, and then you could make the decision for yourself which one's gonna be more important to you. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So what I wanted to do is kind of break these programs down into their different parts and pieces and kind of give you an idea of where they're different so you can make the decision for yourself which one you want to use. So obviously when you start talking about a rendering program, especially a real-time rendering program, the first thing you have to consider is the cost and so as of right now this is probably the most lopsided comparison um, just because um, if you look at Lumion's website if you go to their buy page you can see how their regular version is around 1700 US dollars and then the pro version which is really the version that you're gonna want because it contains things like real skies and their full content library is gonna run about thirty four hundred dollars thirty three ninety six at the moment and if you click on this button for view specifications you can see the difference between the two so like for example the pro version contains way more objects in their library as well as their complete materials library and real skies and the rain and snow so really a lot of the features that we talk about on this channel so to really get the full experience you kind of need to go with the pro version and so like I said that's gonna run you about thirty four hundred dollars at the moment on the other hand, if you go to Twin Motion's site, at the moment, Twin Motion is free to download. And so um, there's kind of an asterisk on that just because um, this version is free to download. And they have stated on their website that, um, that in November of 2019, Twin Motion will become a paid product. But at the moment, if you download this version as an early adopter, you can keep this version for free forever. So obviously, free is much less expensive than a paid version. Um, I do want to know, expect this to go paid in November. And I would assume, and I don't have any facts to back this up, but I would assume it'll probably go subscription. Um, I don't know that for sure, but it seems likely. And I, again, just speculation, I would assume at some point um, Lumion might start looking at going to subscription as well but again I don't have any info on that it just seems like it would make sense so from a cost standpoint you can't beat free um, where obviously if you buy Lumion right now you're definitely paying for a pro piece of software um, so that's the first thing to consider is the cost the second thing I want to look at when looking at the difference between Lumion and twin motion is the user interface and so we'll go ahead and open up an example model inside of Lumion so Lumion's interface is very, um, I don't want to say stripped down feeling, but it's very open feeling in the sense that uh, most of your different options for editing things is contained in this lower left hand side of your page and everything else kind of stays open um, inside. Um, in your screen to give you almost more of an artistic feel when you're in here working. Um, I think this definitely gives you more of an artistic feel when you're working with them flying through these models. But I, I also make it, I, I think that it makes it feel a little bit like um, it's kind of hard to find some of the options that you're looking for um, when you're first starting to work with it. So, but it is very simple. And then when you decide to like place different objects or things like that, when you click on these, then other things pop up inside of your model. So like for example, if I was to bring a tree in here, um, you bring a tree in just by uh, clicking on the place button and then uh, finding the tree that you're looking for and clicking to place it. So from a user interface standpoint, it's very open feeling and then by selecting different things, you have different things that pop up in your window. So things like advanced options and other things like that will pop up when you have things selected. And then when you deselect things, those go away to keep this kind of like open feel in here. The other thing real quick that I want to talk about is you move objects around by clicking on these little dots that show up when you click on select or rotate. Um, and then you can use this to kind of rotate and move things around. 
and again those options kind of pop up as you select as you select different objects inside of Lumion so the other thing that is not contained in Lumion is any kind of a um, any kind of a overall organization structure. So you can come in here and select like all of the same object. So if there's copies of an object in here, you can use the options in here to do that. You can also there's a bunch of randomize options and other things that pop up which are really useful, but there's no like list of things that are inside your rendering at the moment um, that you can come in here and select different things and group them and organize. Um, you can put things on different layers and turn those on and off, but it can just get a little bit clunky just because there's no way to go through here and find different things in your model. You have have to use this and click on the little buttons in order to uh, get those things selected. So Twin Motion's user interface is a little bit different. It's a little more traditional in the sense that you have kind of a library bar off to the left hand side of your screen, which you can collapse in order to get a bigger view here. Um, but you have a library bar on the left hand side of the screen, which is where you adjust things like your vegetation or your materials or things like that. You also have a bar at the bottom of the page that will pop up different options for different things depending on what you have selected. So like for example, if I select a material, um, you'll get kind of a uh, you'll get kind of a menu down at the bottom hand side, the bottom part of the page with different options in here and you get something similar with Lumion but it'll actually um, it'll pop up and then go away depending on what you have selected where it more stays inside of twin motion so it's a little bit different than the way that Lumion looks the other thing that you have in twin motion that I really like is I really like this list of objects that are in here so you can actually come in here and find different things and then move them around and also kind of organize them based on this list over here so instead of having to make uh, what kind of feel like some arbitrary selections and things like that in Lumion you can come in here and find these different things using this outliner function a little bit easier it also allows you to toggle these things on and off really easily so like if I wanted to toggle all of this kind of tree for example I could just select them and turn them on and off without having to put them on layers or anything like that so I, I just find this this works a little bit more with the way that I like to keep things organized. Some people might not like it. Um, I do like it just because uh, it kind of fits with the way that I set things up in my 3D models as well. Um, so it is nice to be able to have that function of being able to find things in here. Um, the other thing I want to talk about real quick is inside of Twin Motion, um, in order to move things around or scale them, you get this little gizmo thing in here that lets you move thing along things along the different axes and it also contains the ability to rotate different things and things like that. I find moving things around in a 3D space to be a lot easier with this particular function um, just because I can dictate that I only want to move something along this axis or I want to keep them on the same plane or move things up and down. From a functionality standpoint it's really not that different from the move function inside of Lumion but I find this one a little bit easier to use um, just to keep things on different planes and things like that. To me I, I kind of wish they would reduce the size of some of these icons. Twin motion feels a little more cartoony to me in the sense that all of these icons feel a little bit oversized and it feels like there's kind of some wasted space in here and also some of the options feel a little bit stripped down just in the way that they're in this list but again that's just a feeling thing. The functions are there it just feels a certain way based on the way that it looks but I would say either one is usable. I find it easier to stay organized in twin motion and I find the move tools a little bit easier to use inside of twin motion. All right, so the other thing I wanted to talk about and compare in this video, and then uh, we'll move into some other topics in a future video, because there's just a lot to cover, is I did want to go through the landscaping functions inside of Lumion and twin motion and kind of show you the difference there. So probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over into a fresh render window in order to do this and I kind of like this mountains and spring preset so we'll go ahead and use this one um, but I just wanted to talk through some of those functions and kind of what's contained and what they look like give you kind of a comparison between the two so both programs allow you to adjust your landscape with these sculpting tools so they both have very similar sculpting tools that allow you to kind of sculpt the ground and the landscapes and things like that inside of your rendering they both have uh, like flatten 
functions and other things like that. So the actual sculpting itself is fairly similar between the two. Um, one interesting difference when we go over into Twin Motion is you have to bring in kind of a landscape plane in here. Um, in order to sculpt that while well, Lumion kind of brings this in as just part of the environment. So like in Twin Motion, for example, if I was to take a look, this right here, which you can edit and sculpt, is actually a big plane object that's brought in. And you can actually turn that, there we go. You can turn that on and off, but that's a plane that's actually being brought into the 3D space. But you can see how if I come in here and I click on the sculpt button, it's very similar in the sense that you can adjust the intensity and the speed at which this sculpts. There's different shapes in here. But there's definitely some differences. It is nice having like a square brush option and things like that. But overall, they kind of do the same things. Um, they've both got kind of a smooth or a noise to kind of allow you to randomize this. So from just a sculpting standpoint, I find them both fairly similar. Um, the paint materials are kind of the same way. So if you click on the button for paint, you can come in here and you can paint different materials um, on your ground and on your renderings. Um, and they're both very similar in the sense that they both allow you four of these material options. And you can come in here and you can paint those and you can adjust your brush speed and things like that. And these are also customizable. So in Lumion, you've got a list of the different materials that you can come in here and paint with. So in Twin Motion, you have very similar options where if you click on the Paint Terrain, for example, you basically get these four different options for things that you can apply in here. So you can see how I can come in here and I can paint this um, in the same way. Um, you can also adjust the diameter and the scale of these different materials in here as well as the opacity of the brush. So um, if you don't want to paint this quite as strong, you can turn that opacity down. But you can adjust the materials that are in here um, by dragging this in. You are limited to four landscape materials in Twin Motion in the same way that you are in Lumion. So painting the materials is very similar. Um, where you start running into differences, and I think one of the... Uh, so where you start running into differences though, and I think this is an area where Lumion has a huge advantage right now, is the ability to add landscape grass to your painted materials. And we'll talk a little bit about this in the materials section, but Lumion has the ability to turn on landscape grass and place this in a 3D space. So if I was to fly down here and zoom in and look at this, you can see how this is applying grass anywhere that green material has been applied in here. And we'll make it a little bit taller and a little wilder just so you can kind of see what it looks like. But you can see how that's actually applying the grass where the material is. Um, Twin Motion does not have that function at the moment. So the way that you add grass inside of Twin Motion is you have to use the nature settings and the vegetation settings. And then you can drop the grass in as actual 3D geometry, kind of like this. And so that works for things like this face where you have wild grass that needs to go on this face, but where it gets a little bit frustrating is when you start dealing with uh, things like this corner right here, for example, where it's more of a landscaped area, it's very difficult to set this up where it drops the grass in the right place, like in these corners and things like that, where in Lumion, all you have to do is just apply a material. So in this case, we're having the grass be on this grass material right here, and this will put the landscape grass anywhere where this material has been applied. So that's a feature that I hope gets added to Twin Motion, because at the moment it is much easier easier to place grass based on material location than by actually dropping 3D geometry into the model. Um, one other thing that Lumion has that Twin Motion does not in this department is the ability to choose your overall landscape. So there's a bunch of different landscape presets that you can use in order to kind of create different looks. So like this would be almost like a Utah look with the red rocks, or if I was to choose another landscape, there's just a whole bunch of different presets presets that you can select in order to make this look different without having to go through and custom select all of those different landscape 
um, materials in here. The other thing you can do is you can adjust the kind of rock that goes on these side faces inside of Lumion. So inside of Lumion, um, if something gets above a certain steepness, like this right here, it applies a rock material and you can adjust that rock material over here to whatever you want. So you can change that to a red or um, a more of a gray rock or something like that where in twin motion you would have to come in and you would have to actually um, paint that material on the sides of the faces. I do not believe that does that automatically. So Lumion's water settings you set you can set inside your landscape and you can also apply as a material but you can either turn on an ocean so like this one and an ocean is basically going to sit in here kind of across your whole model so if I was to move this up for example you can see how this is basically applying that um, everywhere inside of your model and you can kind of adjust that um, you, so you can bring in an ocean and it's going to show water basically everywhere where um, where this water is above the ground level and you can adjust the different colors and things like that one nice thing I like about twin motion or uh, one nice thing that I like about Lumion is it allows you to kind of edit the way that the uh, water moves and other things like that where you couldn't necessarily um, where there's a little bit less of that functionality contained inside of um, Twin Motion. So Twin Motion also offers you the option to add an ocean inside of uh, your rendering. So you can see how I can come in here and in a lot the same way I can adjust the height of the water that's in here as well as the different colors and things like that. So you can see how I can apply an ocean across this whole thing. And this would kind of work the same way where if you had a um, this would work the same way in the sense that the ocean would show up wherever it's above the ground level. Um, you can see how the editing ability of that ocean is a little bit more limited in twin motion. So you're really kind of limited to these different options and you can't really adjust the way the water moves or anything like that um, inside of the program itself. So if you're trying to add water and you don't want to add an ocean, there are a couple different options where you can either apply a water material so like you can apply a water material to a face or an object like let's say probably not the best example but we'll go ahead and apply this to this so you can apply a water material to an object inside of your model kind of like this and I believe you can do the same thing inside of Lumion so you can also add what's called a water cube inside of twin motion and that's basically what it sounds like where it's a cube of water um, that has kind of a volume to it and then you can use the scale tool to kind of adjust that and kind of sit that where it needs to go inside of your rendering so that's how you would add water if you didn't want to use the ocean settings where inside of Lumion what you would do is you would add what's called a water plane and so with the water plane is going to do is let's say we wanted to add water into this little uh, this little corner right here you would just click on the water button and you can just uh, place that water inside of Lumion and you can see how you can kind of stretch that and you can move that up and down and you would just move that where it kind of intersects with the face where you want it to be. And again, that gives you a few different water types that kind of adjust the way that that water looks. And it's not really showing up the way that I would like for it to, but it's a little bit more editable in my mind inside of, um, inside of Lumion, but I would say either one of these would work. Overall, I feel like you get a little more options for the way that the water is going to look inside of Lumion than you do inside of Twin Motion. So that's kind of a high level overview of those differences. I would say in a lot of cases, these tools aren't necessarily better or worse. They're just different. Um, there are programs that have a few more functions than others, but I'd love to hear your opinion on which one you like more. Um, we're going to get more into like the object libraries and things things like that in future videos, but I'd love to hear what you think about the video as well. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.